Hey everybody, Mac here. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Comic Book Wednesday. As many of you may know, I am more of a DC fan than I am a Marvel fan. I've read more DC comics. I've collected more DC comics. When I was a kid, I read Batman, Superman, Justice League. Crisis on Infinite Earths was one of the things that got me into collecting comics. The only thing I've ever really read from Marvel was back in the 80s and 90s, G.I. Joe and Spider-Man, which I still continue to read Spider-Man to this day. But I know I have also said that I had some issues with McFarlane Toys' DC Multiverse line. Well, for some reason, it just finally clicked that this is the future of the Multiverse line for action figures. For probably at least another 8 or 10 years, McFarlane more than likely is going to maintain, um, keep the license, which I believe comes up for renewal next year. So more than likely, he's going to keep it. So... I just need to, I just need to accept it, that because they're not bad, they're just not what I think would make perfect figures, but we can get past that, I can get past that, and this is me going all in and finally accepting that this is what my line is going to be for collecting DC figures. Not only did I get a Batman figure, not only did I get a Batman variant figure, I got a gold label edition of this figure, and I found this at Target, which I thought was odd because I thought the gold label figures were only at Walmart. But this is Batman in the hazmat suit, gold label edition, which means that the light up sim or the the symbol, the bat symbol on his chest, is supposed to light up. So it has an action feature, which I think is really cool because while I have said that McFarlane puts out way too many Batman. And I still, still think that. This isn't like the Batman Who Laughs. This isn't like any of the Dark Multiverse Batman that he's brought out. What I like about this is, this is basically just Batman in a different suit. In a hazmat suit, obviously. But this reminds me of, like, the early 90s, after Batman 89 came out, and Kenner was making all of those variant Batman figures. Like, you had the Batman in the black suit, you had... Uh, something like Scuba Dive Batman, Jungle Attack Batman, things like that. And the fact that this is even tied into a storyline, you can see right there, Justice League, the Amazovirus, that makes it even better because, yeah, this was in the comic. So it kind of reminds me of that, back in the Kenner days, of just getting variant suits for him rather than just different looks for him. And I dig that. That's cool. So what we have here is the DC Multiverse Batman hazmat suit. The packaging is what we've come to expect from the Multiverse line. Big window, gold label up here, highlighting the action feature down here. On the side, more window, hazmat suit. On this side, you've seen it already, the storyline that it comes from. On the back, we have a promotional image highlighting the light-up feature. More than likely, this is going to be the image on the inside for the trading card. And we have a cross-sell along the bottom for Etrigan, the Demon Knight, King Shazam, the Bat Cycle, McFarlane's Wonder Woman, and Shriek. So, without further ado, let's get this open and let's take a look at McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Batman Hazmat Suit Gold Label. Alright friends, here he is, Batman in a hazmat suit out of his box, and the first thing we'll do is we'll put the tape measure to him, we'll see how he measures up, and to the top of his head... To the top of his head, he is about seven inches tall. To the top of his pointy ears, he is about seven and an eighth. So he rank, he's right up there with the rest of the McFarlane figures. And before we pull him forward and take a look at him, he has a very solid neutral stance. He, he stands very well right here. And that is another issue that I had, especially with the early days of the McFarlane toys, was that they didn't always quite stand on their own. But pulling him out of the packaging, he just, he has a very solid stance. Now, the only issue is, and we'll take a better look at this whenever we look at the articulation, but the detents in his feet, he either has that or he has that. He doesn't have a flat-footed stance. So when you set him down, you kind of have to do that thing where you just sort of force him into the midway point between the between the clicks of the detents. But let's bring him closer and let's take a better look at him. Okay, looking at articulation, the first thing we're going to know is the articulation is going to be limited in the head because of the hoses going into the oxygen mask here. 
but he can do a side to side. If he didn't have the hoses, I would be willing to bet he could do a full 360. He can actually look up very well. He can look down and he has a decent amount of tilt to his noggin. His arms, these, these pieces right here are fairly soft rubber and they're anchored right here down on his arms, actually below the bicep swivel. So if you bring his arms up to 90, to just about 90, this will actually fold up on top of his shoulder so you can get his arm up. His, hand, his arms will do a full 360. He has a butterfly joint right in there. And he has a bicep swivel that this armor piece is attached to. So the shoulder pad just kind of moves around the shoulder, moves with the arm. He has double jointed elbows with some decent travel to them. Oh, that's not even bent entirely. Ah, come on. Oh, there we go. There we go. Double jointed elbows with some really good travel, although that does look a little funky with it flattened out and that one nub coming down. And he has those hivel, swivel hinge swivel wrists that they pivot around and they go up and down. Or you can do that and you can do that. And now they come in and out. Now he has what looks like an ab crunch here, but he doesn't really crunch at all. As a matter of fact, I'm not entirely sure what that is supposed to do, except for minimal amount of pivot right there because it gets stuck and it feels like you're warping it or about to break it, but he does have a waist twist as well. And he has some side to side. Can't really crank forward at the waist, can sort of crank back, but mostly you're going to be bending him at the hips right here. And his legs will come straight out. They go back. They come out to the sides fairly well. For these big chunky legs, he has double jointed knees. Now I almost got excited. I almost thought there was a boot cut in here because this boot piece was twisted coming out of the packaging. But this is actually a soft piece of rubber that's just slid over the leg. So while this does turn, it does, it's not actually an articulation point. It's just loose rubber in there. But the ankles will turn. Ankles rock back. Ankles rock sort of forward. And we have toe articulation right in there. Now, something else that I want to show you on the articulation. If you remember on the Jasker figure, I believe it was, the crotch piece here was a soft rubber so that it got out of the way of the leg articulation. It's the same way with the hazmat suit right here. That this is a soft piece of rubber that will bend or conform or get out of the way. You can see that right in there of wherever you move his legs to. And I like that. It like really... Like I said before, sometimes I felt like the sculpt of McFarlane toys got in the way of the articulation, but this helps to take care of that. almost forgot as well that this does have that hip swivel, but these legs are so big and chonky that it swivels forward okay, but it doesn't really turn out very well. Now looking at the sculpt in the paint app, you can see that there is a decent looking bat face, Batman face, sculpted underneath this glass shield right here, but I believe this is glued in place because I've tried to pop this out, but every time I get my nail in there and I feel like I'm going to pop it out, I also feel like I'm going to break it. So as far as I know, this is meant to be kept on there, so we can't get a really good look at the face of Batman underneath there. Although I do also like that this head seems proportioned to the rest of the body because an issue with a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot of the Batman figures, but an issue with, a, with enough of them is that the head is often too small. Like the one that stands out to me is the one that I have, which is the Detective Comics issue 1000, that the head is just way too small. This looks proportioned very well with the rest of the body. The tubes are very rubbery, very gummy and flexible, so that they don't feel like they're going to break and they don't feel like they're going to tear whenever you're moving his head around. There's also enough play in them that you're really not putting stress on them unless you're doing like very drastic head turns with him. The ears, I like the ears. The ears are a little stiff so that if you bend them too much, they might snap off, but they do have some play to them. I really like the detail of the hazmat symbol on the back behind the bat symbol. I like the textured detail of the suit. You can see it's dimpled right in there in the crotch piece and in the undergarment right there. 
I love the 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 pockmark on the metal on the armor. Like he has been wading through these toxic environments, and it's even starting to take a toll on the armor that he's wearing. I really like that. I also like the the fins, the bat fins right here, that are very very sharp. That's like very Batman Begins. I feel, and I dig that. Over here we have like a control panel. So like he can watch his vitals and it has like a clear plastic piece over top of it too. Like it really is a control panel that he can watch. The boots are fantastic. The boots, just like the shoulder pads, have a very armored and weathered look. Like, like it's being corroded by the environment that he's walking through. And I really like that. I like the gold studs on the kneecaps. You have some canisters over here. What's this? An anti-venom, maybe. Who knows? And the gold for the utility belt just makes the whole thing pop, adds some very much-needed color to the whole look of it, and it just looks great. The, the, the paint and the sculpt I've never had issue with. The paint and the sculpt looks fantastic. Now, because this tank is a big plastic tank, and this is where the battery for the light-up feature is, and we'll look at that in a second, this almost kind of stands out. That This is a little too toy, if you know what I mean. Like, it's a bright plastic. You have that screw right in there. It, I'm glad it's on the back, because it kind of takes you out of everything else that this figure helps to establish. And I even like, you can see right there, like he has the brown straps, the backpack straps, like that's what's holding the tank on. And it goes underneath the front armor plating right here, or rather it attaches to the front armor plating. That's cool. I really like this. I really like the look of this. I really like the design of this. And I really like the paint job on this. Now, we're going to get to the bat symbol. So give me a second. Let me turn off the lights, and we'll see how well this lights up. All right, friends, you ready for this? You ready to see the bat symbol on his chest light up when I press on the tank? That's it. There's an LED in the middle of his chest, and it doesn't do anything to light up the entire symbol. That's a little disappointing. <laughs> That's really disappointing, actually. I don't know. Maybe it's just mine. Maybe there's something broken in mine. Maybe some of the other ones light up better than that. But yeah, with this on, with the lights on, you can't even really see the light coming on that well. The only button is back here. This tank is on a pivot that when you push in on the tank, on the top of the tank, it presses the button that lights up the symbol as it is inside. So... Sorry. Sorry to let you down. I'm a little let down by that myself. I really thought this whole thing might like light up and you could see the outline. You could see the bat symbol in the darkness. So while Hazmat Suit Batman doesn't come with any extra hands, he has one clenched fist on his right hand and he has one gripping hand on his left hand, which I'm not entirely sure why because there's no accessories that come with this figure. I would have liked to have had maybe this be an open hand sort of like this, how it just has, it's almost a trigger finger hand, so that whenever he does have his little console over here, you could have him positioned like he's getting ready to press some buttons or something, or he's reading an out, uh, readout on it. I don't know. The purpose of having a clenched fist and a trigger finger hand, especially putting the trigger finger hand, the gripping hand on the left hand, I don't know. I would have either preferred two fists or maybe swapped these, I'm not sure. As with all of McFarlane's 7-inch figures, Batman in the hazmat suit comes with his own figure stand. It's a one-peg stand with the DC logo tampoed right there on the front. Like all of the DC Multiverse figures, the Batman in the hazmat suit comes with his own trading card on the back. It just has his name, no statistics, just a quick write-up on who Batman is and what the suit does. You can pause that and read that if you want to. And accessories! Now, for size comparison, here he is beside the DC Multiverse Superman from Action Comics 1000 and Batman from Detective Comics 1000. You can see what I mean, that, like, the heads, this head size looks like it would look much better on this body over here. And it looks a little bit more in line between these two. 
he might be a little, the eye line might be a little taller than Clark over here, but I can just accept that that's maybe because he's wearing armored boots. Gives him a little bit more of a lift. Here he is beside a few newer DC Multiverse figures. Uh, last night on Earth, Wonder Woman with the Helmet of Fate and Curse of the White Knight, Azrael. It still kind of bothers me that Azrael is so short, comparatively speaking, to the rest of the line. Here he is beside Hasbro, G.I. Joe Classified, Cobra Trooper, and Snake Eyes. Here he is beside Lanyard Toys, Xenomorph Drone, and City Hunter Predator, because why not? He's fought them both. And finally, here he is beside Jazzwares, Wicked Cool Toys, Spartan Collection, Master Chief, and Noble Six. So yes, me getting this figure is totally me just saying I'm diving into the multiverse now. I'm going to collect the figures because I am a DC fan, and there are some really good figures out there. Don't get me wrong. There are some figures that I look at and I'm like, why did he do this? What is this? But there's a lot of really good stuff out there. I can't deny that. So with this one, it is weird seeing Batman without a cape, but it works with this suit, with this outfit. I really like the look of it. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it really has a lot going for it as far as the sculpt, as far as the paint apps, the weathering on the armor. The whole look of it is just very unique, and I like that. It is disappointing that the bat symbol doesn't light up nearly as much as it showed on the packaging. And I didn't think it was going to be that bright, but I really thought it was going to be more than just like a little, a little dot on the chest. However, I have it. I'm glad I have it. I'm glad I have the gold label version, because truthfully, it didn't cost any more than the normal one. So there's that. So... Even if it doesn't work, at least I have it. At least it's part of my collection. His legs are... I'm sure you saw during the review and in the photos right now that his legs are really spread out wide in sort of like a V stance. You can't bring them in any closer. And I believe that's the payoff for having that really solid standing base that he has. Because this figure does have a really good neutral position. I can't deny that. I really like that. The lack of accessories is kind of a disappointment. You could have easily added in another Batarang. Other Batarangs are always good because those are the things that the Carpet Monster is going to take take from you. So anytime we get a Batman, just throw in a Batarang or two. It'll be cool. Trust me. We can always use spare Batarangs or maybe even like another grappling gun. I don't know, but just having no accessories with this, that was a little bit of a bummer, but definitely not a deal breaker. I still think the hip swivel needs some work. I would rather just see a regular thigh swivel than having to try and do that hip swivel because I feel like you get a lot more play out of it than you do with the way that it's set up now. And I really desperately want a boot cut <laughs> on these figures. I've said it before that the boot cut is one of those things that you don't realize how much you actually use it or how useful it is until you don't have it. Also, truthfully on this one, the ab crunch leave something to be desired but past that to look at him the, the the sculpt the look the coloring the paint app it's brilliant in in that aspect in the presentation aspect so that's what i have for you today i do hope you enjoyed this and yes we will be looking more at multiverse figures coming down the line so until that happens play well everyone stay safe stay healthy and as always thank you for watching